All right, thank you all for tuning in to WJT 98.3 FM, your voice and music, your station. My name is Jeff Badu, and I'm a parallel entrepreneur and a wealth multiplier. I'm the founder and CEO of Badu Enterprises LLC, which is a multinational conglomerate in the finance industry. And what we do is we provide a suite of financial services, including our marquee company, which is Badu Tax Services. And that's the firm that does tax preparation, tax planning, and tax representation for individuals and businesses across all 50 states in the U.S. And we also have clients in over 20 countries at the moment. So today, we'll be going through a discussion about the Stimulus Package 3, something that we've all been waiting on, talking about $1,400 stimulus checks, unemployment, EIDL, PPP, rental relief, We'll talk about that just to give you the information. Nothing has been officially sealed and closed yet, but what you'll hear today will most likely be what happens um, in the future. Now, of course, we've already had two stimulus packages passed, one being the CARES Act that was passed in March of last year, and then another one was the Coronavirus Relief Act and Omnibus Bill. And that was passed in December of 2020. So we'll talk about the third stimulus package that will most likely get passed um, early next month or late this month. Of course, this Sunday is the last day of the month. Um, so with that being said, welcome to the show Money Talks, where all we talk is money. We're live today on WJT LP 98.3 FM, where change matters and also your voice, your music, your station. My name is Jeff Badu. And I'll be your speaker and host for tonight. So as usual, let's start off with the market recap. Um, this, um, this report is as of February 19th, 2021. Let me just lean back a bit. So ultimately, the, um, the stock market was closed last Monday in honor of President's Day. Equities were mixed on the first day of trading last Tuesday. The Dow advanced 0.2% and the global Dow gained 0.3%. The remaining benchmark index is essentially lost value led by the Russell 2000, which fell by 0.7%, followed by the NASDAQ at negative 0.3% and then the S&P 500, which is composed of the top 500 companies in the U.S., was down 0.1%. Prices on 10-year treasuries plunged, sending yields soaring. So it has an inverse relationship. Bonds basically have an inverse relationship. Whereas the prices of a bond, or as the yield of a bond goes up, the price goes down. It's an inverse relationship. All right. Crude oil prices climbed over $60 per barrel for the first time in several months. The dollar inched ahead um, 0.3%. Market sectors were mixed with energy, financials, and communication services climbing while utilities, real estate, and healthcare fell. So essentially, that was last Tuesday. So the stock market was down a bit. It was a bit mixed. The Dow reached a record high last Wednesday, so the market creeped up last Wednesday, a day that saw the remaining benchmark indexes essentially lose value. Energy led the way. Um, basically, when only industrials, materials, and information technology, or IT for short, fell. Yields on 10-year treasuries continued to climb. Crude oil prices soared past $61 per barrel, and the dollar advanced nearly 0.5%. Inflationary pressures seem to be rising as producer prices advanced 1.3% in January, and retail sales surged more than 5%. So retail, people are going out and shopping. They're buying more stuff, basically. As inflation, there's the 2.0% benchmark. So right now, inflation is right below 2%. Inflation, of course, is the diminishing purchasing power of your money, meaning your money buys less. So for example, if you're not investing right now and your money is just sitting in the bank, well, you're losing 2% of your money due to inflation every year. In 50 years, your money is going to be wasted. It's going to go to zero, basically. Or that dollar that you have today, right? The dollar that you have today, 50 years from now, it won't do anything. Like, it literally won't buy you anything at all. 
Um, and that's the power of inflation. That's the power of why you should be investing. That's the power of compound interest. Um, so it, it's real simple math. 2% inflation every year times 50 years is 100%. That means that in 50 years, you would have lost all your money. And that does not factor in compounding even. Compounding means money that builds on top of money. So if you leave your money sitting or uninvested, you're going to lose it anyway. <laughs> so why not just invest it? Why not take some risk? Why not do something with it so that you can make some money? Worst thing you can do is just blow it and just and just splurge it. Right? Money comes in, you spend it. Money comes in, you spend it. I mean, you're you would go broke at that rate, unfortunately. So basically all that to say is you have to invest no matter what. Invest, period. It doesn't really matter what you invest in as long as you have knowledge of that topic. It doesn't have to be stocks, by the way. It can be real estate. That's my personal favorite. You know, we just got on the contract on a 25-unit building today, actually. Um, and... I mean, I love real estate because I could take a dollar and turn it into four dollars overnight. It's crazy. And in some cases, you can take three cents and turn it into a dollar overnight. That's what that's the power of real estate. I can take a dollar, turn it into four dollars. I can take three cents, turn it into a dollar. That's the power of leverage, the ability to do 25 percent down payment, three and a half percent down payment. You're turning $3.50 into $1. I mean, or I'm sorry, you're you're basically, you're taking three cents, right? Three cents and you're turning it into a dollar. That's pretty powerful. And then you have the stock market where you can't get as much leverage as real estate, but you can get some nice returns. S&P 500 is doing pretty good. I'll show you the numbers um, today. So the key is you have to invest. It's not. It's no longer a choice. It's a requirement. You've got to invest in something. And the best investment you can ever make in this world is yourself. In your education, your skills, your financial education, your knowledge. But on top of that, you need to put your money somewhere where it's working hard for you. And shout out to my beautiful wife, Yvonne, who released a video yesterday. Um, actually, she released it today on our company, our life insurance agency, Badu Life and Health Solutions, LLC, where she quoted me and said that if you work so hard for your money, why not let your money work hard for you too? If you go to work, punch the clock, and that's all you do, you don't invest, you don't do anything, you lose all your money within 50 years or so. It's crazy. You have to invest. You have to save. And then when you're talking about bills on top of that, where you're not even making enough money to or investing to be able to supplement some of those bills, I mean that that's huge. That's a big that's a pretty big burden. So with that being said, I would say invest. Like no matter what it is, whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's stocks, whether it's real estate, life insurance, that's a powerful investment by the way. We're actually doing a private webinar on March 9th. Um, you know, with some private clients, and it's powerful. I mean, we just did a webinar on, on the radio two weeks ago about it. It's a very powerful investment, so you have to invest. But nonetheless, the Federal Reserve may scale back support and rethink the timelines for raising interest rates, which makes sense. Interest rates are at a debt 0% right now at the federal funds target rate. And so they're, they might be thinking about increasing, but they're probably not going to do anything because of COVID-19. The Dow couldn't keep its streak of positive sessions alive last Thursday, closing down 0.4% by the end of the trading. Overall, stocks plunged to the lowest level in more than a week um, as each of the benchmark indexes essentially um, finished in the, in the red, essentially. So they finished in the red. All right. Um, what, with the small caps of the Russell 2000 taking the biggest hit fall of 1.7%. The global Dow dropped 0.8%, followed by the NASDAQ, which fell 0.7%. All right. And then the S&P 500, which sank 0.4%. By the way, the NASDAQ is composed of the top, the big tech companies like Apple, Microsoft, Google, Tesla. Shout out to Tesla, by the way. 
Shout out to Elon Musk, the wealthiest man on the planet, who surpassed Jeff Bezos a few months ago. Um, but basically, crude oil prices dropped, but remain over $60 per barrel. The dollar weakened. Among the sectors, con only consumer discretionary and utilities posted gains, while energy slumped 2.3% on the day. Stocks edged higher last Friday, with only the S&P 500 closing the day in the red. The Russell 2000 climbed 2.2%, the Global Dow advanced 0.5%, and then the NASDAQ inched up 0.1%. The Dow was flat on the day. Materials, and energy, industrials, and financials showed strong momentum, each gaining at least 1%. Utilities, consumer staples, healthcare, and communication services fell by at least 1%. All right. And then the yield on the 10 year treasuries climbed higher. Okay. While crude oil and the dollar dropped. So that was Thursday. Let's see what happened on Friday. Despite a late week surge, stocks were mixed to a lower to lower last week. The Dow and the Global Dow closed ahead, while the NASDAQ, the, S the Russell 2000, and the SP 500 lost value. So overall, last week was a bad week in the stock market, basically. Um, treasury yields rose, but the dollar, crude oil prices, and gold fell. Among the sectors, energy went up 3.1%, financials 2.8%, it's led the way, while healthcare went down 2.5%, utilities went down 2%, information technology went down 1.9%, and consumer staples went down 1.1%. Investors seem to be keeping their collective eyes on the prospects of more stimulus, which we'll be talking about today, about the Stimulus Package 3. And then when the fourth and the fifth one comes out this year, we'll be talking about that too. All right. So investors seem to be keeping their collective eye on the, on the prospects of more stimulus and signs of inflation and rising interest rates. I mean, I don't think interest rates will go up. It doesn't make sense for you to stimulate the economy with stimulus and then go around and increase interest rates. It makes absolutely no sense. It's doing two opposite things, basically. You don't increase interest rates and push more stimulus into the economy. If you want to put more money into the economy, you would need to lower interest rates. Right now, we're at a dead 0%. We can't lower interest rates any lower than where they are, or at least we don't want to. The national average retail price for gasoline was $2.50 um, per gallon. And that's basically an increase of 0 0.073. Actually, no, 0 0.04. All right. And then the Dow Jones so far is up 2.9% this year. The NASDAQ, composed mainly of technology stocks, is up 7.65%. Big time. And I told you guys the NASDAQ would do pretty good this year because it's tech. Everybody needs tech right now. Everybody needs Zoom. Everybody needs their iPhones. Everybody needs Amazon. Everybody needs... They need something that's related to technology. It's, it's a hot industry. There's no reason why it wouldn't go up. S&P 500 is up 4.01%. Russell 2000 is up 14.78%. And then the global Dow was up 6.76%. Federal funds or interest rates are at a dead 0%. Ten-year treasuries are at 1.34%. And with that being said, let's talk about what's going to happen this week. The last week of February brings with it several important economic reports, led by the second estimate of the fourth quarter gross domestic product, or GDP. And that's what kind of determines whether or not we're in a recession or not. The initial advance estimate saw that the economy expanded expanded at an annual rate of 4%, which is good. That means the economy is actually going up. Also out this week is the January issue of the Personal Income and Outlays Report. The Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index, an inflation indicator relied on by the Federal Reserve, showed that consumer prices rose 0.4%, I mean, that's terrible, in December and advanced only 1.3% in 2020, which makes sense. Inflation right now is slightly below 2%. So it only makes sense that the consumer price index or CPI is basically only up 1.3% or so. So just, just a few things to keep in mind. 
All right, so let's get into it. Stimulus um, package three. By the way, if you haven't taken advantage of the first stimulus package, and God forbid the second stimulus package, you probably want to take advantage. The first stimulus package included relief such as PPP loans, Paycheck Protection Program, that's for businesses, EIDL, Economic Injury Disaster Loan, and Grant for businesses. And then you also had expanded unemployment. You had about $600 extra per week. The first time in history, Uber drivers could collect unemployment and taxi drivers too. Um, let's see what else you had. You had the $1,200 stimulus checks, STEMIs for short. And then you had rental relief, about $5,000 or so per tenant. I know my tenants applied for it. Um, and then you had a few other, I mean, there's always going to be vaccine stuff and child care and a lot of other things in there. And then a second stimulus package. So that was a part of the first, what I just mentioned was a part of the CARES Act. And that was passed in March of 2020. The second stimulus package known as the coronavirus omnibus relief agreement. Um, that was, so the first package was 2 trillion. The second one was 900 billion. And that essentially put more money into the PPP, Paycheck Protection Program, and created PPP-1 and PPP-2. Then it also put the $10,000 EIDL targeted grant or advance for short. And then it also provided additional, about $300 for unemployment on top of what you were already collecting. By the way, I got clients who they said they're probably never going back to work for as long as they're collecting unemployment. I'm like, all power to you. I don't blame you. You know, which is kind of messed up. America is a very messed up system. But hey, to each his own, you got to do what you got to do to feed your family. Um, so, and that also provided rental relief, $600 stimmies. And of course, that was heavily debated by our ex-president. And he wanted 2000 And they fought, they fought, they fought. Next thing you know, they ultimately decided to pass the bill. Right, they passed the bill at six hundred, and then a new bill gave fourteen hundred. He was basically promised the extra fourteen hundred, and he's getting his promise fulfilled. Um, all right, so those are a few things. You have rental relief in there. Somebody asked a question: Can you get EIDL and PPP? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. We've done a lot of webinars this year, by the way, on the topic. We've done probably about ten webinars on PPP and EIDL alone. So definitely check those out. Check out the website, jeffbadu.com, J-E-F-F-B-A-D-U.com. We have tons and tons of content on that site. So let's talk about the third stimulus package passed basically by the Biden administration. $1.9 trillion, yes, trillion with a T. They're printing all this money. They've already printed $5 trillion basically printing all this money, which of course you got to pay for at a certain point in time, or you're paying for it now. Um, so one thing to note about stimulus, it's nothing more than taxpayer money going into the programs. It's kind of a bit like a Ponzi scheme where you just keep putting money into something and then it just keeps recycling itself. Um, but I mean, that's, it's needed, certainly needed. We definitely need stimulus into the economy. But basically, $422 billion for stimulus checks to individuals, right? So $422 billion in stimmies. I'll get into those details. $246 billion for supplemental unemployment, especially for the self-employed. $350 billion for state and local governments. That's a big one. And they need that. State and local governments definitely need that. 160 billion to combat virus, COVID-19, including vaccines, testing, and tracing. So the contact tracing, 160 billion. I think they did great there. 130 billion to reopen K through 12 schools, right? That's, that's definitely needed. Kids need to go back to school, but how are they gonna go back to school when there's still talks about the virus being, you know, still prevalent? So I don't exactly know what they'll put that money into. Maybe some more virtual programs or maybe some more, uh, maybe two day a week, three day a week sort of things. 
And then you have $7.25 billion for the small business via the Paycheck Protection Program, PPP. So PPP3 is coming out soon. We have PPP1, PPP2, now PPP3 is on its way. If you haven't taken advantage and you're a small business owner, I don't know what you're doing, but you should. So let's get into some of the details. I won't get too in-depth into it, but basically... $1,400 stimulus checks, so and that's for everybody, adult dependents too, like over 18, over 17 dependents, $1,400 stimmies to everybody, as long as you make, you know, within the adjusted gross income amounts, they'll use your 2019 tax return, if you haven't filed 2020, to determine your eligibility. Or they'll use your 2020 tax return. Some people are like, oh, should I wait to file? Don't wait to file. Go ahead and do what you got to do. Um, and there's, a, there, there's sort of a scheme around this thing. So if you're eligible as of 2019, but you're not eligible as of 2020, then you might want to wait to file your 2020. If you're eligible as of 2020, but not 2019, you might want to hurry up and file your 2020 tax return. All right, so that's, um, that's just something to keep in mind. And then there's an additional $400 in unemployment benefits. So if you're collecting unemployment, or if, if you're just new to this unemployment game, by the way, unemployment is what determines a lot of things about the economy. So by filing for unemployment, you are increasing the unemployment rate in America, which basically, it, it leads, it's a trickle-down effect, basically. So the more people are unemployed, the more they need to put more money into their pockets, basically. So 1400 I'm sorry, 400 on top of what you are already receiving. So if you are only getting 200 a week in unemployment, uh, minus that whole COVID or pandemic unemployment, then you basically can get 400 plus whatever you originally collected. So right now it's 300. It's just an extra hundred dollars to make it 400. All right. And somebody asked, did I say PPP3? Yes, I did say PPP3. Absolutely. And by the way, small businesses make up the most hiring in the U.S., so how can you increase, how can you reduce unemployment if you don't give them money to the businesses that hire the people to keep them employed? It's impossible. So they have to give money to the businesses. Right? It's all, it's simple economics. It's simple common sense stuff. Right? So that's just something to keep in mind. All right. The next one is expanded child tax credit. This one is big. Man, anybody want to donate some kids? You know, expanded child tax credit would bring many families more money. <laughs> when I say many, I mean a lot of families more money. So let me explain what this means. In his plan, Biden proposes expanding the child tax credit that currently allows families to claim up to a $2,000 credit for children under the age of 17. If approved, the plan would extend the benefit to lower income families who otherwise wouldn't receive the credit. Under Biden's plan, families could claim up to $3,600, almost double the current child tax credit per year per child. My, oh my, $3,600 as a child tax credit per year per child under the age of six, and then $3,000 per year per child un that's basically between six through 17. And yes, for the first time, a 17-year-old can, can get the child tax credit. Typically, it was under 17, so 16 and below. And here's another thing. You now get a $300 per month advance, just like the STEMIs. The STEMIs are just an advance of a tax credit. You're getting $300 per month per child. So a household with 10 kids, $3,000 a month. Wow. A house with 10 kids, 3000 a month 
after the tenth month, that's thirty thousand dollars. I mean, that's big. I think this is pretty nice. So the current child tax credit right now, the only way to get it is when you file your tax return. Shout out to tax season, by the way. If you need a tax professional, reach out to us at badutaxservices.com. Email is support at badutaxservices.com. S-U-P-P-O-R-T at B-A-D-U taxservices.com. Reach out. We can help you. Get your STEMI. If you didn't get your STEMI first or second one, we'll help you get it. And then we can help you plan for the third stimmy. You know, so $300 as an advance for the child tax credit starting in July. $300 a month. So if you got unclaimed kids out there, you might want to start claiming them. If you haven't been taking care of your business, you might want to start taking care of your business. Because this is huge. And by the way, with the unemployment, the more dependents you have, the higher your unemployment uh, benefits would be as well. Right? And you get the $1,400 STEMI. So you're talking $1,400 STEMI per child. $3,600, up to $3,600 per child. That's already $5,000 a head. Then you got the child and dependent care credit. That's about $600. Then you got the earned income tax credit. I mean, doesn't sound too bad to have a child. Just saying, right? Proceed at your own risk. You know, proceed at your own caution. I don't know what the government is trying to do. Maybe they're trying to encourage people to have more kids. Um, and, I'm, and I know for a fact they're helping stimulate the people with kids because, I mean, as someone who's watched... You know, my mother, for example, and my, my father, my parents take care of my little sister. It's not cheap to take care of a kid. Um, so I'm glad they finally became realistic with these dollar amounts. I mean, a $2,000 tax credit just wasn't cutting it. It used to be $1,000, by the way, for one child. Now you're talking $3,600 plus a $1,400 stimmy per child on top of the $600 plus the $1,200. I mean, that's big. So that, that's a very, very big one. The next one, the eviction ban is extended through September. So right now, you cannot evict a tenant. So right now, you can't evict a tenant. You cannot evict a tenant. But there's rental relief that, uh, that provides more money. Um, I believe it's about, um, about $20 billion or so. More money so that renters can apply for the program, the rental relief program, so that money can be paid to the landlord on their behalf essentially so that it can cover that rental payment we just got on the contract on a 25 unit building today and you're talking 25 tenants that can potentially all get the rental relief program now there's certain restrictions certain stipulations and everything like that so you do want to be careful with that but now you have an extra $5,000 for the EIDL targeted advance or grant. So if you live in a low income community and you have less than 10 employees or so, you can get not just the 10,000 grant, but now an extra $5,000 grant. And they also put more money into the EIDL program, the loan at least. The grant itself, they're putting an extra 5,000 for the targeted low income community. Right? The black owned businesses, the Hispanic owned businesses, the businesses that we so called claim that there's no support. Well, there you go. $5,000 extra on top of the second stimulus package where they put $10,000 cash in your bank account to sustain your business and they gave you a 30 year loan at 3.75% interest rate where no payments are due for an entire year. And they gave you PPP money. Right, we've done a lot of webinars on that. So are there resources? Yes. And by the way, let me mention my purpose in life. My purpose in life is to inspire and support the super hungry. Those that are listening right now, the super hungry, to take hold of infinite resources like the stimulus package in order to create an abundant lifestyle. Right? That is my purpose, to inspire 
and support the super hungry to take hold of infinite resources in order to create an abundant lifestyle. That is my sole purpose on this planet. So that's the stimulus package three. Just to summarize again, $1,400 stimmies, direct payments to Americans, right to your bank account. If you have it on file with the IRS, please make sure you put the correct information on your 2020 tax return because all this money is going to go into the same bank account that you put on your 2020 tax return. $400 extra unemployment benefits. Expanded child tax credit, $300 per month per head. And then if you don't get the full amount, you just reconcile it on your 2021 tax return that you filed in 2022. And by the way, I don't think this pandemic is going anywhere anytime soon. The eviction ban is extended, which also provided rental relief. So more rental relief. And absolutely, if you don't mind, like and share this. This is recorded, meaning that it is posted. We're streaming live on my Facebook channel. And I'll post it on my Facebook page, which will also end up on my YouTube channel. And then also, um, for IG, it's on IGTV. So I'll update that and post that as well. Um, so basically, so you have $300 per month. And then the eviction ban, which provided rental relief. And then you also have the extra $5,000 of EIDL targeted advance if you live in a low income or you're based, your business is based in a low income community. So now that's $15,000 that you can get as a grant for your business just by being a business owner. Yes, Uber drivers do qualify, even if you make a dollar in Uber and you had a tax return that showed that dollar and you applied for the EIDL grant well, you can actually get $15,000 for your business. Like, no joke, no kidding. No gimmicks, no schemes, no none of that. Um, and Lily said, I need some rental <laughs> rental kits. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, man. They're giving out $300 per month per child on top of the stimmies, on top of the unemployment, on top of the rental relief, on top of the PPP, on top of the EIDL, I mean, that's that's insane. You can literally make six figures this year just off STEM, STEMI money, right? Just off child tax credit, earned income credit, um, let's see, unemployment, let's see, EIDL, PPP, rental relief. I mean, they're, they're just handing it out at this point. They're just, they're just saying, here, you take it. You take it. And then Barbara asked a question. This is only if you make less than 75K. Actually not. It's actually not, not, not the case. 75K is when they start phasing you out of the stimmies, the stimulus checks. But then there's an upper threshold. You keep for every dollar that or for every hundred dollars or so you lose a dollar, some sort of calculation. So it's actually not that you lose the stimmy. It's that it will be reduced. That's all. So the EIDL has to be in a low-income area to qualify, yes, for the grant, to get the full $15,000 grant, yes. But if you're not in a low-income community, then it's $1,000 per employee, essentially. There's a lot of politics and debate around that, by the way. And then somebody asked the question, what about Instacart? Yeah, whatever, whatever business you have, Instacart, Uber driver, you know, exotic dancer, as long as you got it on your tax return, as of 2019 and also 2020, you can get a $15,000 grant to support your business, whatever it is that you do. And that's for the EIDL grant, by the way, targeted EIDL grant or advanced, they call it. And then they have the EIDL loan, then they have the PPP1, PPP2, PPP3, PPP stands for Paycheck Protection Program. I'm telling you guys, they're just handing the money at this point. They're just saying, hey, you want it? Come get it. That's it. The money is there. The money is there. 
You can be a very, very smart and wise person, invest this money, get you your first property, get you a life insurance policy that's going to help you build wealth. Talk about rich dad, poor dad, pay yourself first. Don't let, don't work for money, let money work for you. I mean, that is powerful. Question, if the business was established in 2020, would you qualify for round three? Yes, you would. Yes, you would. We can talk more about that. They haven't specified the rules exactly yet, but you would qualify because even in PPP2, you qualify if your business was established in 2020. So with that, looks like we're at 744. We'll wrap it up. Actually, we got one question. How much is the life insurance? So when it comes to life insurance, I wouldn't think about costs. We can have a whole segment about this. I wouldn't think about costs. A life insurance policy can be an investment in your future. Let's say you're putting in $100 a month into what's called an index universal life insurance policy. $20 a month goes towards the cost of your life insurance, and that's to maintain your death benefit, let's say $100,000. But then $80 a month gets invested into the S&P 500, composed of the top 500 companies in the U.S. The reason why they call it index is because there's a ceiling, meaning the maximum interest rate you can earn on a policy say 15%. I've seen some policies as high as 15%. And then there's a floor where that's the minimum you can earn on your policy. So if the market were to tank, you still earn 1% on your money. And if the market was to do well, you earn 15%. So you're sort of, you're, you're protected with your investment, but you have more on the upside. By that being invested, I ran a scenario of a 20-year-old individual who just puts in $100 a month, just $100 a month. If they hit age 70, that would be about $2 million in their account. Just $100 a month. That's it. Imagine if they did 200 Or just imagine if you leverage that. You did an in, a, a premium finance, bank finance, index universal life, where a bank comes in with you for every dollar you put in, they'll match you $3. It's like buying real estate, 25% down payment. Imagine if you have four times the leverage. Four times the leverage. So basically, all that to say is, oh, and oh, by the way, when you take the money out, it's tax-free. You don't have to pay any taxes when you take out money from a life insurance policy. You do it in a form of a loan where you knock on your, your own bank's door with your name on it. Your name is at the front of the bank, no brick and mortar, just an online bank. And you say, hey, I need $10,000 today. What can you do? Oh, it's your bank. I'll give you 10000 3% interest, 30 years. Okay, yeah, let's do it. How do you pay the money back? Using your own life insurance policy. I mean, it's crazy. And in the unfortunate event of death, they basically balance out your death benefit. They subtract your death benefit from the outstanding loan amount. So it's not, I wouldn't think, Thinking of how much do I need to invest or how much how much is life insurance? Like before you find out about something, think about how much it's worth. What is it worth? What am I getting out of it before you think about costs? Because if you think about costs first, then your mind is gonna be trapped. Oh, it's a thousand a month. Oh, it's five thousand a month. So what? If something is gonna end up with two million dollars in your bank account then it's an investment. It's like retirement, 401k, IRA, all that stuff. So we can always talk more about life insurance. We do, of course, have a life insurance um, agency known as Badu Life and Health Solutions, LLC. So you can take all the stimmy, all the stimulus money and put it towards something that will benefit your future. At a minimum, protect your family, right? And Barbara asked a question. I, she said, I need to sit and talk money strategies with you. Absolutely. Check out the website, jeffbadu.com, J-E-F-F-B-A-D-U.com. Send me an inquiry. I respond back within 24 hours. And yes, I am the one that responds to the email. Um, and we can chat. We can talk more about it. Put a strategy in place. Put a game plan together. Make your 2021 the best and most prosperous year on the planet. And I can say that for myself. 2021 has been fabulous, awesome. And that's by the grace of God. That's by the abundance-minded thinking. 
Uh, let's see. Question, how soon can you tap into the cash value? That's the thing. We shouldn't be asking these questions. We shouldn't. Because it's an investment. Now, if you really wanted to know, you can tap into your cash value at any time. But you might want to let it grow. It's an investment, right? It's an investment. It's an it's a 10-year investment, a 20-year investment, a 30-year investment. You can, you can do whatever you want with your own money. But when we show you an illustration, we're showing it to you so that the money can stay in there, be invested over time, let it grow tax-free. And then maybe when your child is ready to go to college, you take out the money and fund their education. Or when you're ready to retire, you take out the money and fund your retirement. So questions such as, how much does it cost? How soon can I take it out? You got to change your mindset. Because by taking it out too soon, your money's not working hard for you. I mean, you work so hard for your money. Think about how, much, how hard you work. Why shouldn't your money be working hard for you too? There's no reason. It doesn't make any sense. And I just explained that inflation, 50 years, all your money will be gone. <laughs> if you don't invest it. Because inflation is at about 2%. 50 years, 100% of your money will be gone. And TJ said, let's connect. Yeah, check me out, jeffbadu.com, J-E-F-F-B-A-D-U.com. You know, we got a lot of resources on there. At the very bottom is the contact us section. Feel free to reach out to me. You know, I also have my three books on there that you can check out. Um, I have a bunch of free articles, a bunch of free videos. Anytime we go live on this, I put it on my YouTube channel and my podcast, which is on Spotify Radio and also um, iTunes um, radio as well. All right. Okay. Said, um, got a common genius, man. Absolutely. Very enlightening. For sure. I appreciate the info. Absolutely. Yeah, we got to stop. We got to stop the poverty mindset. You know, the the mindset of how much do these things cost? It, you shouldn't be asking yourself how much does this cost? Right, And there's nothing wrong with finding out the price of something after you found out the value of it, though. It's not how much it costs. How can you afford the thing? In Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki mentioned, it's not about, you know, if I can afford it. It's about how can I afford it? We buy real estate. On our new deal that we're buying, it's at $1.4 million. The contract just got accepted today for $1.4 million. I don't have $1.4 million sitting in the bank account. And I wouldn't recommend anybody have that amount of money sitting in the bank anyway. However, I know that there's a bank that's going to give me a million dollars. 75% leverage. 25% down payment. The only reason why is because I did research... And I found out that a bank is going to give me a million dollars to close on a $1.4 million building. So what do I need to do? I need to come up with 400000 basically. How do I do that? I find somebody with 400000 Do you see the difference? It's not, oh, how much does this thing cost? As a matter of fact, the last thing I care about when I buy a building is the price. Because I can back into the price. You simply take the net operating income, which is the income and expenses of the building... Then you divide it by the cap rate, the capitalization rate, which is the rate of return on your investment, and that gets you the price. Now, in order to determine your net operating income, you need to make sure you verify things like rent. Look at the market rent. Is it truly what it's stated by the agent? You need to look at the expenses and do a reasonableness, a quick analysis. Hey, the taxes says 10000 I went on the assessor's website, it says 5000 So that means there is an understatement of the tax bill. I need to put that into my NOI. And as I make my offer, I need to tell that to the agent. Hey, here's a screenshot of the tax bill, but you guys are telling me it's 10000 Why is it 15000 So you can get a price reduction. And that's the beauty of real estate. You can, you, it's all, it's kind of common sense, to be honest. But you do have to have the knowledge. You can't, that's why the number one investment on the planet is in yourself, in your education. So how do I buy a $1.4 million building and I don't have a million dollars in the, you know, in my bank account? I simply go and ask a bank, hey bank, here's how much this building is making. 
Here's all the financials. Now, full disclosure, with this type of building, you do need some experience. They're not just going to hand you a million dollars to buy a $1.4 million building. You do need some experience. But starting out, though, you can get a three-unit, a four-unit, recommended for a unit, no experience required whatsoever. A 620 or so credit score. And a 3.5% down payment. That's how I started. So, with that, so how do I find the 400000 I find somebody with 400000 Or I go to another bank and say, hey, can I get 400000 which is exactly what we were doing, by the way. Let's go to another bank, ask them for the 400000 Because we know the first bank is not going to give us, you know, according to the rules and their laws, they're not going to give us, essentially, a... Um, they're not, they're not going to give us 100% of the loan. It's, it's against the rules. But they say, hey, go to another bank. Go to another bank and get the 25%. Use, your, use something that's collateral. I mean, use um, get an SBA loan. I mean, they're just handing out the money nowadays. Do something. Do something with it. All right. So with that being said, we'll wrap it up for today. We have a last comment here. This is school every Monday. Thank you. Absolutely. And by the way, this video is posted. Like, all the videos are posted on my website, jeffbadu.com, on my YouTube channel. Um, let's see. My podcast on iTunes. Spotify. I mean, there, there's so many places. And I do want to get to this last question. Do you have an internship or mentoring program to teach people about to get into business or buying real estate? Yes, we do have a financial coaching program. And by the way, through our Badu Foundation, where we basically provide free financial literacy education to the youth ages 6 through 18 um, and the homeless, anybody who is experiencing homelessness. We actually give them the education for free. That's our gift to the world. And for the kids, we give them a $500 scholarship um, once they complete the program. And they can do it every year up until the age of 18. They get a $500 scholarship. And at the age of 18, they can start teaching the class. You know, so. Uh, but for financial coaching, we do offer that. So as a paid service, we do financial coaching where we, we coach you and train you on how to invest in real estate. And with that being said, let me wrap it up for today. Hopefully, you guys gained some wisdom and knowledge today. Um, check me out on social media. And also, please check out the website, jeffbadu.com. I mean, when I tell you there's an abundance of resources on that site, there's an abundance of resources. I've spent over 100 hours building content on that site. Um, and then we have a, a, a comment. Can we have a phone conversation, please? Yes, we can. Contact me, 773-819-5675. 773-819-5675. But please, check out the website first. Contact me through that route because that's my direct website. You know, the number I just gave you is a number to get services, but you might not directly get to me. And we have a comment that says gratitude. Absolutely. So with that, thank you all for tuning in to WGHC 98.3 FM, WGHC LP 98.3 FM, where change matters, and your voice, your music, your station. My name is Jeff Badu, and I look forward to continuously delivering you all some content. Thank you.